looking at uh, people already logging in here. We've got uh, Richard Grace, he says hello, and Tim Myers. Um, Michael Wiesner, happy yeah. Wednesday. Stefan Del Prab, good morning, everybody. He's morning wherever he is. James, the astrophotographer, a big winner in our astrophotography contests here. Astrobeard, uh, Richard Grace. Book Davies, Norm Hughes, uh, Bergman Scooters on. Um, uh, Cameron Gillis, howdy from the drenched Pacific Northwest, recovering from Pineapple Express. Okay, <laughs> Michael Whitaker's on. Um, we have um, Ben Crosswaite from Australia. Uh, Jeff Wise and Aaron Thompson. So, um, hello everybody. NASA has captured a new infrared image of the center of our Milky Way galaxy, revealing details that have never been seen before. Scientists have tried for many years to peer through the dense swirls of dust obscuring many of the Milky Way's fascinating features. Sophia, NASA's telescope on an airplane, observed our galaxy's center in infrared light, which is invisible to human eyes but pierces through the dense dust. Now we can see new details in the curves surrounding the Arches Cluster, the densest concentration of stars in our galaxy. Also visible is the quintuple cluster, with stars that are a million times brighter than our sun. Our galaxy's supermassive black hole takes shape with a view of the fiery-looking ring of gas surrounding it. NASA created the panorama by combining Sophia's new crisp image with previous data from the Herschel and Spitzer space telescopes. Scientists will use the image to study previously hidden facets of our Milky Way galaxy including how many massive stars are forming here, and to set targets for telescopes of the future, like the James Webb Space Telescope. Well, hello everybody, this is Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific and uh, the Explore Alliance. And today with me, we have uh, special guests, um, Kate, Dr. Caitlin Ahrens uh, Goddard at, from the Goddard NASA, or NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and uh, Terry Mann from the Astronomical League. And um, um, later on, we'll have uh, Tyler Bowman uh, showing all the winners' images of uh, our first astrophotography contest, and he'll reveal uh, the um, best of show um, uh, image. So that'll be really cool. After that, Vivian White uh, from the Night Sky Network will be joining us, uh, and uh, uh, we'll be talking about the Friday, um, uh, excuse me, tomorrow's, Thursday's event. Um, it will be our 28th Global Star Party co-hosted by Night Sky Network. So we're going to talk about the speakers and all the goings on of that. And then Jerry Hubble will continue his segment of the mentor training program that we have. So, but uh, let's, um, let's turn our attention back to Caitlin and Terry. Uh, it's great to have you on our program um, and to talk about uh, tomorrow's or Friday's event. Excuse me, I keep getting these uh, events mixed up, um, but uh, uh, I'm excited to have you both on. Uh, Caitlin, it's been, I think I met you three years ago, is that right? Four years ago, maybe? About three or four right? years ago, yeah. Four years ago, that's right. So you gave a presentation uh, at Explore Scientific. It was really cool to meet you. And, um, uh, you know, I think it was during, could have been during the, um, um, the Astronomical League uh, event that was held there, uh, possibly. I, I can't remember. Quite possibly. It might have been the mid. The mid, mid American States Regional. One here. That's mid right. States. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but anyways, uh, Terry uh, uh, is heading up the Astronomical League Live 2, and Caitlin is um, 
uh, uh, the keynote speaker there. Um, why don't, uh, tell us more about uh, what's going to happen uh, on, on Friday, Terry. Okay, we're going to start off with kind of an update from the league. We've got Carol Orge that will start off and just kind of give an update. We've actually had a couple of things happen since the last time we were on the air, so he'll talk about that. Uh, Chuck Allen will be doing uh, about a 30-minute presentation on our observe programs. I think now we have over 75 different observe programs, and wow. we're finding a lot of partic participation. A lot of people are finding this is a good time to do uh, observe programs. It kind of keeps you out and away from everybody, and you can concentrate on your own little section of sky. So we're finding a lot of activity in the observe programs. Then we've got John Goss. It's going to be speaking about the league's 75th anniversary. Uh, November 15th is our 75th anniversary of the Astronomical League. So this whole year, every month, um, you'll hear different things going on in the league and a little bit of history about the league. So John will be here speaking about that. We're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to bring K Caitlin on. And she will be doing Shake, Rattle, and Roll. So, and I will let Kate. That's the, that's talk the about theme that. of the whole program, right? Shake, rattle, and roll. That's it. Yeah, and this is um, maybe Caitlin can uh, give us more. Uh, Caitlin, could you introduce yourself to our audience um, and give give a little bit of a background? You have such a remarkable background. Uh, uh, she does. You know, uh, so uh, maybe you could do a little bit of that introduction uh, at first, Terry. Yeah, let me talk about her first because I'll say things that she might not say. She might not say, yeah, yeah that's right. Yes, I've known Caitlin for quite a while. We go, we go back a ways. Uh, she is amazing. She, you know, when you meet somebody and you know they are just so focused and so comfortable with what they are doing, that was Caitlin. And Caitlin has just been an amazing person to watch grow up. Um, because I, I, you were still in, I don't know, maybe junior high when I met you. I think yeah. I can't remember what year it was that I first met you, but oh my, she was amazing. She was one of those people I talked to for 10 minutes and I looked at her mom and said, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what she is going to be. And uh, she was a Horkheimer winner. Yeah. Uh, just an amazing person. So Caitlin, she, she really is. She won't tell you that, but she truly is. Yes. She's one of those that you like watching come up from, you know, all of our Horkheimer and Youth Awards and Noyo Awards. Um, she's one of the shining stars. Yeah. And uh, yesterday, Terry and I were talking about uh, what becomes of young people that are recognized in these awards. You know, uh, what, what happens with uh, uh, young people who are interested in science and uh you know, Caitlin's a great example of, of what could happen. Uh, Caitlin, why don't you tell us more about uh, your life, uh, starting maybe just from that time and, and how it's gone oh, to now? Uh, In one minute. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm still very much blushing over, over <laughs> Terry's <laughs> introduction here. That was beautiful. Thank you, Terry. No, that's, cool. that's cool. Oh, goodness. I, yeah, I've, I, I've had a fascination with astronomy. I joined the local astronomy club back in West Virginia at the age of nine. I, typical story of getting the first telescope uh, kind of deal and rushing outside and uh, there's clouds. Okay, let's go the next night. And I uh, got involved with the, uh, the Meteor uh, Observers uh, Astronomical League observing program. And uh, and just kind of evolved into that, uh, getting involved with a lot of star parties. I, I decided public speaking was uh, a lot of fun, uh, certainly a challenge. So I tried to do smaller talks as a high school student. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also joined a speech and debate <laughs> club to also help uh, with public speaking as well. So that incredibly helped, thank you. I, uh, Mrs. Raspa and Mrs. Pinnell <laughs> uh, from my high school. And uh, from there, uh, through those star parties, some of the West Virginia University astronomy and physics professors uh, showed up to those star parties. And so I got to meet my professors ahead of time and got to collaborate with them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I started out doing radio astronomy 
And then that kind of branched out into, I uh, did some seismology work for a while, did a lot of planetary geology. I worked with the USGS out in Arizona doing Mars work for a while. And I ended up in Arkansas doing my PhD right. on Pluto and collaborated the with the of, Horizons uh, mission. Is in <laughs> exactly. Very few people know that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, so it's uh, it's very much been an adventure and it still is. Uh, so now uh, finishing my, I already finished my PhD uh, last year, even though last year seemed like a century already. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm here at NASA Goddard as a postdoctoral researcher. So I assist in a lot of research programs, including uh, bits and pieces of the Artemis program uh, and a lot of lunar research through the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Wow. Okay, that's exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, your talk is, um, uh, I think, titled Shake, Rattle, and Roll, and uh, it's about seismology, mm -hmm. right, on, on planets. And um, uh, that will be uh, your discussion. We don't want you to give uh, your the whole talk here and now, but uh, it, it, w just uh, w what's an overview of the talk? What will you cover? Yes, so it's very exciting. We usually uh, take planets and moons for granted of just their very beautiful surfaces uh, and the mysteries of the mountains and the craters and the glaciers and whatnot, but now we're wanting to see deeper what are pretty much the heartbeats of these planets and moons. And it's fascinating that we take our own Earth for granted. We're still learning a thousand things uh, about our own Earth's interior. But who's to say that Mars's interior is the same? Mm -hmm. Is it or is it not? And uh, how did the moon that accreted from the Earth, how does the inside of the moon look? What makes Europa and Enceladus tick with those water vapor plumes? So we really need to know what is going on on the inside of these planets and moons. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, I'm excited. Um, I did want to ask you too. I, uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, you know you are a Jack Horkheimer Award winner. I, I wish Jack Horkheimer could see all that you have accomplished. Um, you know, maybe maybe he's looking down and and, and seeing that. But um, uh, you know, he was a. Did did you have a chance ever to meet Jack Horkheimer? Unfortunately, not. No, no, you did not. Okay. He was an amazing guy, very funny, incredible sense of humor, um, but an incredible inspiration. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Jack Horkheimer Award, uh, you know, and the spirit of Jack Horkheimer lives on through the Astronomical League. Um, uh, and I think that these uh, awards are very important. Uh, what did it mean to you to get to receive this award at the time? At the time, it was uh, elation because at that point, I, I was just finishing up my senior year of high school and just starting to get into West Virginia University just months away. Yeah. I, at the award ceremony, my potential physics and astronomy professors watched me. And so it was... Uh, there was definitely an exhilaration with it of, oh, good, <laughs> I, I did good things. And but then there was also a, an exciting challenge that I'm not stopping there. There there should not be a reason to just stop there. There's always more to do when it comes to communications and outreach and programs like this. There's always need for that. And so I'm I'm took it as more of a challenge of like, okay, th this is good. This is, I will continue doing this. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, Terry, is there anything that you'd like to add? Uh, uh, any, any additional information you'd like to give about the, uh, the event or, or Caitlin, you know? Sure. We... Um, please join us. We are going to shake, rattle and roll. <laughs> uh, and if you are interested in, uh, showing live views, please contact me at secretary at astroleague.org so I can put you on a list. We know you're going to be there. 
uh, we will do that. Caitlin will end. It will start on Friday about 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. is when we are starting. Caitlin will be speaking from about 8 to 8.45. And after that, if there are people there that would like to show live views through their telescope, that's when we will talk to all of them so that it will be after the keynote. Now, uh, these times are Eastern time that you're giving? Eastern you? Standard Time, Eastern yeah. Standard, okay. Yeah. Usually when I schedule it, I have to put it in my time zone, then break right, it down. Of course, of course. <laughs> That's no problem. So, All right. so it is it's seven. Going so it's going to start 7 p.m. Eastern time, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. All right. So yeah. uh, you'll be able to watch that uh, on the Ast Astronomical League's own Facebook page. Um, of course, all the uh, pages that you're watching right now and our simulcast today, those will all be live as well. Um, so it's a real honor to, uh, again, once again, host uh, the Astronomical League Live event. And uh, uh, it's going to be a fantastic one. Terry has always put together great programs uh, from the beginning of th that I knew her. So she's, uh, uh, you know, we, we, could, we could go on and embellish forever also about all the accomplishments and amazing things that Terry Mann has done for our community and uh, to help other astronomers around the world. So... Uh, that's Thank great, you. and uh, I'm excited. And so we'll see you on. Uh, you've been. You were on yesterday. Today you're going to be on tomorrow with on tomorrow uh, for the Night Jane. Sky Network event. So yeah. uh, with uh, with uh, Vivian White, and um, and then Friday too. So this is this is the Terry Man week. That's, sure. <laughs> that's great. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Caitlin, I want to thank you again for, for joining us. Uh, you know, it's a real honor to have you on. And, um, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it's special, you know. Uh, I, we're not the underwriter for the Jack Horkheimer Award. Uh, that, that's still done by, I believe, Jack, the Jack yes. Horkheimer Trust or something. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. And then how many years has that been going on now? Oh my gosh. You know, I don't know exactly. I can't off the top of my head think of when it started, uh, yeah. but it has been going on for quite some time. Quite some time. Yes. Yeah, he he was just amazing. He, he spoke at one of our Alcons and um, oh, I really enjoy. I think he was at French Lick. Chuck yeah. Allen shared that one and he was at French Lick. It was amazing just to meet him because I watched him. I mean, when I was growing He's up, that funny. was one of yeah, you watched him at night. Well, I, mean, I was at French Lick. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, you were. I saw him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, Caitlin, thank you so much for doing yes. this. I really look forward to it. Scott, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for everything that you are doing. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, thank Take you. Care. Sure. Take care, Caitlin. Looking forward to it. Bye bye. Looking forward to it too. Okay. Me too. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. So we're going to we're going to focus on uh, Tyler Bowman. Uh, Tyler, we announced the winners yesterday, but we didn't yeah. show the images. And um, uh, and you're going to do the reveal on the best of show. So, yes, and you have to bear with me. My computer decided to have a wonderful malfunction while Caitlin was on. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened to anybody else. I don't understand how that could happen to you. No, it doesn't so. happen to you. I know for sure. <laughs> I think you flip a switch. Because I keep redundant computers with me. I have three of them right here. So yeah, I'm talking right. about getting more computers then. Um, it's the only thing I can think of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to share my screen and then just go one by one. Um, let's do that. Let me <clears throat> do this. Bear with me. It's like I haven't done this ever before in my life. Uh, let me minimize. Minim I'm going to have a, oh, my dear Lord. That's a lot of a lot of pictures to look at. A whole lot of pictures. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. Share. Of course, everybody can see my screen. Yes, so, we can. Okay, so bear with me again. My computer decided to have a hiccup, so this is going to be a little out of order and it's going to be a little chaotic. But that's how we we, we do it around here. That's how we roll. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So this first image is Heart of the Soul by Mr. Steve Seidenkopf, as we can tell from the top, um, as we know is a first place winner. So we're going to do this, and this is where it's going to get crazy. Okay, that's another one. 
Uh, this is again chaotic. So this is a first place winner in what category? That's this. Uh, I'm going to try to go from deep sky down to the bottom. Um, I got my other screen open so I can make sure okay. I'm correct one. Um, this is Thor's helmet. Um, NGC. Oh, which one? Is it? I can't remember the NGC number, but it's by Mr. Christopher Sullivan, who is number two. Christopher who? Christopher Sullivan. Sullivan. Great. Right. Congratulations, Christopher. It's a beautiful image. And these are the, again, and also your image is great. There. And hang on. I got to do this because this is where the out of whackness is going to hurt really bad. Oh, I apologize, everyone. There we go. So this is NGC 7635 by Mr. Craig Weston. Uh, this is number three. And that's the bubble right, nebula. Weston. Very nice. Is that also called the bubble nebula? Is that it is. It is okay. called the bubble nebula. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is where minimize. All right. Now we're in lunar. And this is from a Mr. Richard Grace of the moon. Very nice. The astro beard. The astro beard, correct. I keep right. I all hail the astro beard. I don't know. I need to figure out what he does to his beard because I need mine to grow. <laughs> uh, here is one from an actual cell phone that is with an 82 degree. What? Eyepiece. Yep, 82 degree eyepiece at 14 millimeters. Wow, that's a, really sharp. With a 152 apo. Beautiful. Is that from Andrew Corkill? That is from, uh, oh, dang, have it, my, my screen. The guy's name is Viramus something. That yeah, is it's from Mr. That's Andrew Corkill. It is. That's really sharp. That's good. It is really sharp. Mm -hmm. so the next one is from Stephen Delpra, or Stefan Delpra. I apologize, Stefan. It was in the Lunar. Really good close-up image. I, I wish I could look at the rest of what he used as far as the telescope. That's really sharp, really, really sharp. So now we're going to go to planetary is next. Oh, my thing, where did it go? Where did it go? Let's try here. That's not right. This is where it's going to get a little crazy. This is where my computer decided to go crazy. So how's everybody's wonderful evening so far? Is it good? I do. Cell phone. Let's read some of the comments here. Yeah. They are commenting here. Um, Livy and the Stars is with us right now, which is cool. It's good. Yeah. Uh, they are saying that's fantastic. Nice. Noise. Voice. Um, Lord. Uh, let's see. Uh, Book Davies. Uh, yeah, they're all in awe. They love it. Norm Hughes says cell phone cameras have come a long way. They have. Wade Prunty uh, is saying... Uh, Rich Astro Beard uses his beard to power his Astro gear. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we don't know how, but you know, but he does. It's magic. Uh, here, I believe this is Comet uh, Neil Comet Neil Wise. Um, I think that was DSC twelve eighty four yeah. from James Hubbard. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna have. Oh, I'm just gonna do it this it's way. Just... You know, I love that everybody has like their little nicknames and stuff. So. There's with the great transjunction that happened. Oh, with. wow. I was wondering if we would see someone at one of these here. Yeah. Nice. This one's, I think, honestly, the best one. There's a lot of detail within. Oh, that's too close. Too close. Yeah. There we go. With Jupiter and Saturn. Um, yeah. It was, it was a really good shot, personally. Uh, let's do another one here. <laughs> Jim here, Norwood says he's at work and probably shouldn't be watching, so don't tell anyone. I don't know what you're talking about, Jim. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and here's a, here's a good one from Tim Myers with uh, of Mars. You can see uh, down here the the polar cap yeah. down here at the bottom. Yeah. And it's in, Jerry. You may have to correct me, but the white around Mars is what again? Clouds. The clouds. Well, there's yeah. Clouds are typically bluish color. You'll see okay. the around the limb. You'll see the blue. Yeah, you can see it thing. on the limb on the yeah. upper left hand side for sure. Dust storms are are you know reddish. Okay. Kind of that obscure everything. You don't see this darker areas when there's dust storms. No. And here is another one from Mr. Richard Grace, the Mercury transit. That wee little bitty dot. Oh, it's Mercury. It. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> 
I like it. Very yeah, sharp. We're... And here's one of solar from a Mr. Jim Norwood. And it's mm -hmm. got some sunspots in there and a little bit more over here on this side as well. That's, That's right. a good shot. Real good. Excellent shot, shot Jim. Now we're going to move into terrestrial. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, load, please. Please go faster. But I do have some exciting news about the next astrophotography contest. I figured everybody's giddy and wanting to know about what's yes. next. Um, here's a beautiful pe pelican um, just hovering over water. Looks like he's fixing to land and get some nice water in. Wow, nice. And, um, do you know what equipment that was with? I I would have to look at the uh, documentation to see. Um, maybe Mr. Norwood can comment since he is supposedly not at work. Not at work. No, he is at work. He's just yep. we can't we can't tell anybody. So. Yes. Um, and here's a, a chickadee from uh, Miss Jennifer Shelley, and she actually got this with our Bresser bird feeder camera. Oh, really? <laughs> That's cute. That's good. Let's see. Then nice shot. It is a great shot. And a, the beautiful James Hubbard again with the bee. That the, yeah. the detail in the wings is incredible, honestly. Yeah. Very nice. And then another one I believe from is a time lapse. I've always I need to get with James and figure out how he does this because I don't yeah. know how to do it because that's that's phenomenal. Um, now, the last but not least is wide field. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Come on. Come on, computer. Work quick. Work quicker. Come on. But it, this one's from Burge Astrophotography from Larry. Oh, and it's wow. Of, nice. of M31. Yeah. Very nice. Then we have the next one. Come on. And this one should be NG2264. I believe is the Christmas tree nebula. So Jim's telling us the Pelican was with the Nikon camera and lens, uh, a IXOS 100 mount, ah. turned the mount west toward the horizon to get a good stable platform. Oh, very good. My computer's being wonky. Not good. Not good right now. Nope, that's that one. Come on, computer. James says, uh, wow, I'm amazed and totally blown away. Thank you so much. Oh. Of course, now my computer is going to freeze up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't let it freeze up, man. I'm trying not to. I'm doing my best, but it's saying, nope, I'm not doing what you want. Sacrifice yourself if you have to. to I'll do what I have to. Okay. I'll do what I have to. I bet if I close okay. some of these, it will. I know what I'm looking for because I've seen them. That, that, okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me cycle through. Here's, there we go. Okay. So this is a wide field stack of 20 lights of NGC 2264. And it's got the Christmas tree nebula sitting right up here at the top. Oh, yeah. And who did this image? This one was from a Marco Polo. Marco Polo. Awesome. Great. Last but not least is from a good buddy of mine uh, that I've talked to regularly. Is from Johnny. I'm not going to try to mention that last name because I'm going to butcher it, and I don't want to do that. Uh, but this is the Tadpole Nebula Spider and the Fly, which wow. if you look at an app, this is an actual wide shot. And I don't know. I know he did it with a DS or not a DSLR, but I asked dedicated astronomy camera, but I can't remember what lens without looking at um, the documentation that I need. But what we've all here for is who won best in show. And if he's here, great. But it was from a Mr. Steve Seidentop. 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 Yes. Seidentop. That's awesome. He won the best in show because that's that's a lot of detail for HAL or for hydrogen alpha. Um, awesome. What he shot that with. Awesome. So, so, Steve, congratulations. I really hope you enjoy the grand prize of Best in Show. Everybody, I really appreciate you guys participating in the event for astrophotography. And lo and behold, we have another one coming up starting February 18th. 
February 18th, folks. It'll, it'll be a starts. long month. It'll be a month long. So from February 18th to March 18th, it's going to be a DSLR contest. That's it. A little bit more condensed on the second one compared to the first one, but I want to see what you can do with a DSLR in our equipment. Um, we'll have more uh, rules coming in the following couple of days. Um, so everything will be all set up. That way, if you want to start imaging now to get some DSLR stuff and imaging stuff. And, and dig out your old DSLR images, True. you know? True. So. All right, let's see what you can do with a DSLR. There and there's, I'm going to try to do these every month. So all the categories will change. And we might, for, for Mike Wiesner, an iPhone or a cell phone category, just so he can participate. <laughs> and... Uh, and top winner will be a free trip to the Apple uh, place, and uh, I think it's a week-long vacation up there, right? Is that it? Sure, whatever you want to buy. <laughs> it's whatever you want. Maybe not. Okay, maybe not that over the top, but uh, anyhow. Thanks, everybody, for participating. It was wonderful, and uh, we love seeing the images, so that's great. Now, don't forget, there's also another astrophotography contest that... Uh, uh, that we are uh, supporting, underwriting, and that is with the Astronomical League. Uh, Terry, do you know when the next uh, round of uh, uh, submissions can happen for that, uh, that astrophotography contest? You're, you're muted, Terry. Yeah, that'll be a good question to ask Carol. I am not sure. I haven't heard anything um, in the last couple of weeks anyway. Okay. Well, I'm sure it will be before long. I don't know if it's going to be a regular cycle of the awards, which this year will be running a little bit later since of COVID. So, um, you know, we'll ask Carol about that fr Friday and have him do an update. Yes. Right. Well, great. Okay. Well, we can talk about that during uh, uh, the event on, on Friday, I suppose. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Great. So James wants to send in a better copy of the B. We can't imagine a better copy of the B, but if you got one, we'll take it. So <laughs> that's great. So anyhow, uh, okay, well, let's, um, let's switch over to Vivian White from the Night Sky Network. Vivian, how are you? Hi, everybody. Wonderful. It's so nice to see familiar faces. Hi. Right. I love that background behind you. That's awesome. Thank you. I just moved in and there's actually boxes everywhere behind me. Oh, so I, I just picked something. <laughs> I you just painted that on your wall behind you just real quick, you yeah. know, so, right? <laughs> uh, Vivian, uh, you've been on our shows before, uh, but let's, uh, could you introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, you and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, Vivian is an amazing outreach phenomenon and all by herself. She's uh, if you see her in action uh, at a show or an event, I mean, she's so engaging. She gives an incredible lecture. Uh, she uh, and you've been with uh, Night Sky Network for how long? Uh, Fifteen years now. Fifteen. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. So that you taught uh, me everything you know, I know. Right. I know we're getting really, really good lessons from you along the way. So thank you. Oh, really. <laughs> No, I've been learning from you. So, but um, we last saw each other at the 2017 Total Eclipse in Casper, Wyoming. So we got to see that together. That was really cool. Uh, but uh, uh, I had asked um, Vivian if she would consider having the Night Sky Network co-host a global star party, and she agreed. And she's put together a whole program. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So hi, everyone. I hope some of you listening in are in the Night Sky Network. We are a, a coalition of 400 and something astronomy clubs across the U.S. And wow. uh, we work closely with the Astronomical League and our mm -hmm. focus is on outreach and public engagement. So um, we uh, are sponsored by NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And we've been doing this I think 17 years now so I came on kind of towards the beginning oh, since wow. 2004 wait what does that make it yeah 16 years maybe and 
Uh, we work with amateur astronomy clubs all the time to provide outreach materials, to do, we have monthly webinars that we offer with NASA scientists and um, let's see, boy, lots of other things. We have monthly outreach articles that we offer for astronomy club newsletters and uh, we have a great calendar that's open to the public that gives uh, the upcoming astronomy events that amateur astronomy clubs are hosting. And a lot of those now obviously are online. So mm -hmm. they're available to anybody across the country. You can usually find a couple different ones every day, which is pretty exciting. If you ever um, need extra astronomy excitement or um, engagement, then this is a fun place to find that. I can stick that in the chat, but if you go to Night Sky Network, um, uh, dot org, I think you'll get there. You can um, see all of the events happening. Yeah, so we, we do lots and we have so much fun doing it. And I'm just part of a big team, well, a small team really, that, that puts that together. And I'm so excited to help host the star party tomorrow. It's, it's going to be great. So we, um, like uh, um, all of the global star parties, we, we have other people uh, contribute to that. Um, who are, who are some of the highlighted people uh, that you have lined up for speakers? Oh, well, you um, have helped, uh, of course, uh, David Levy is going to kick sure. it off from the beginning, which I love. Um, anything where I get to be on a call with David Levy is a, a bonus. Let's see, we have Skip Bird from WASI up in um, the Westminster Astronomical Society Incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We have, so it's four hours long. The first hour is gonna be a lot about just Night Sky Network and outreach. We're gonna have lots of different outreach activities. So if that's your thing, I think you'll like it. Uh, it they can be, you can use them to engage your audiences or you can learn something new if you're new to this. Um, they're not just for kids, they're for everybody. <laughs> these these uh, activities are a lot of fun to do uh, no matter what age you are and they help. Um, bring some pretty complicated concepts into focus and and um, help explain them kind of to the general public is what we're going for. So let's see, who else do we have? Oh, the second hour is going to be all about the big astronomy project that we're working on, which is really fun. It is a um, planetarium show that we have partnered with, with uh, the California Academy of Sciences. So mm -hmm. uh, the director there, Ryan Wyatt, will be joining us. Um, and the title of the program is Big Astronomy, right? It okay. is. Right. And it's all about all the people who bring you the astronomy images that you see, specifically uh, a lot of the people in Chile. So we it's an NSF funded project. We've partnered uh, with a lot of really amazing um, planetarians around the country. And we've created activities that you can use in your general outreach and then modified them because of COVID to be able to do a lot of it online. So mm -hmm. we'll see how to do some of those online and um, how to get the activities yourself. They're all freely available online. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tim Spuck is going to be joining us from Associated Universities Incorporated. I'm not getting the whole list here. There's a long list. I'm just going to give you some highlights I'm, here. I'm looking at the list right now. I see Good. Ryan Wyatt. Help me out. <laughs> uh, California Academy of Sciences, um, yep. which is awesome. Renee Kerrigan from Peoria Riverfront Museum. She is fabulous. You're going to love her. Okay. Um, and, and some of the uh, amateur astronomers who use the activities pretty regularly are going to join us and they're going to share some of how they use them. Okay, well, this is going to be cool because we'll get to see Night Sky Network's activities all fleshed out. And uh, so that's, that's really awesome. Um, uh, the, uh, there will be door prizes as well. Um, so I know that you're giving away one of those really cool uh, um, celestial umbrellas that, that I saw at one point. Um, and uh, uh, the Astronomical League will be also joining us to give, uh, you know, to do the questions and answers and uh, the door prizes that we normally give away uh, during that time. And um, I personally think every week should be Terry Mann week. That's just my <laughs> <laughs> she's really great she's one of my know. heroes it's great to be I, would, I would take everybody that's here tonight uh, on all week long 52 weeks a year so that's that's no problem um you get uh, me you, know, you get me two or three times a week already scott i know i, I did have you five <laughs> days a week and sometimes more than that so. <laughs> that's true that's true now you you're you're awesome and you're actually up next jerry so but um 
Uh, Vivian, is there anything that you wanted to add before oh. we... Uh... Yes. Okay. So we're not done. After Big Astronomy, oh, we're going to have a whole hour um, dedicated to our Girl Scouts Reach for the Stars program. It's a really okay. amazing NASA funded program that we work with Girl Scout Astronomy Clubs. Well, we work with the Girl Scouts across the world and we helped to create uh, six new badges, space science badges last year. No, now it's two years ago, 2019. But those are rolling out. They're the most popular STEM badges of all right now, which is very exciting. And, um, and we are working with the Girl Scouts of Northern California. Jessica Henricks is gonna be joining us. She's also one of my outreach heroes. She um, will be giving some fun uh, interactive activities that we can all do together online. And let's see, Larry Lebowski from University of Arizona is joining us. He is an amazing astronomer mm -hmm. um, and has been leading Girl Scouts uh, on some amazing trips. Let's see. Oh, uh, Lou Mayo, uh, who is oh, out man. at Goddard, he will be joining us. He's helped Lou's start. Lou's great. Yeah. He's fabulous. Yeah. So yeah. he's helped start some uh, Girl Scout amateur astronomy clubs. There are awesome. a few yeah. dozen now across the country, which is very exciting. And they're doing uh -huh. amazing things. One of the um, one of the Girl Scout astronomy club uh, adult partners is going to join us too. And she'll show off some of the things that they've been doing. Uh, and then the last one, the last hour that we're together is we're going to have some uh, specifically online outreach ideas so that when you're giving these global star parties, there are ideas for how to help explain what you're looking at to a general audience and some activities that you can do. And I'd love to hear from all of you all along the way about sure. how you explain things. So uh, we learn from each other for sure. And uh, I learned most of what I know from so many talented outreach folks in, out there. So I'm glad to have you all join us tomorrow. Well, that's great. Now, um, uh, also too, we should, we should mention that Night Sky Network has uh, resources. If, if you're a member of, uh, or leading up uh, a club uh, and you want to know how to do, uh, you know, really effective, uh, uh, virtual outreach type of programs. Uh, you know, uh, the Night Sky Network has lots of great information about it. So we'll talk about that during the event um, tomorrow and uh, where people can go to, to, uh, to get, you know, great ideas on how to do their own, uh, you know, streamed event. So that's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm not going to sleep probably until now saturday so <laughs> i'm really excited no get some sleep I'm before pumped. tomorrow i plan on it <laughs> all right vivian thanks for taking time out of your busy day to be with us today thank you thank you it's a pleasure i'll see you all tomorrow okay take care take care all right so uh jerry you are you're on okay i I've been busy working on uh, a lot of uh, trying to get, uh, I've talked about it last week. I think the firmware upgrade is coming along. We're going to be releasing a brand new firmware for the PMC-8. Uh, we're also, uh, uh, along with that, I'll be releasing a new ASCOM driver version for the PMC-8 system. Mm -hmm. And I think I went through a few of the features, but I'm not going to go through them right now, but but that's coming along pretty well. Uh, we're in the middle of, uh, I would call it alpha testing right now, reading out some little bugs and things that uh, we want to make sure that it's very reliable when we re when we uh, send it out for people to test and then release it finally. So that's what I've been working on. So I apologize. I'm just going to kind of wing it. I told Scott earlier I didn't spend any time at all preparing for today's show. So. I'm just going to wing it and I'm just going to grab a prepared. Well, I, Caitlin did, you know, but <laughs> yeah. uh, and Terry just, did and uh, right, Vivian right. did. Uh, Tyler <laughs> kind of did. So Ky Tyler had his computer stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm just <laughs> I'm reaching into one, my book and and grabbing a piece out of it to talk about. That's all I'm going to do right now. Okay. So it's it's talk talking about how to match your equipment to your observing and it typically and the book's about science, but it really goes to talk talks about any kind of observing you're going to do. How do you, how you help? How do you what do you look at to match your equipment to what you're trying to observe? And it's in general terms. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Um, and uh, do you see that? It's coming up. Here it is. So. <clears throat> 
One of the things I talk about, a big part of the book is about, you know, deciding what your observing program will be and how to get the best equipment that matches your observing program and to get the most bang for your buck, right? You wanna get the best performance with, with the least amount of cost. So one of the things that, that you'll find out when you go to buy equipment is if you buy a, a piece of equipment that says it does a lot of different things and it's not really good at any one thing. It's not the be I should say it's not the best at any one thing. It, it can work good enough uh, and get familiar with stuff, but typically when you want to um, get the best performance, you have to tailor your equipment to very specific, your very specific needs. And you can do this cost effectively. Um, uh, but you'll, but typically what you'll have is you'll have, you probably have at least two or three different configurations, depending on what your object is that you're trying to observe. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm going to go over a little bit here. Um, you know, for example, a DSLR, is a great camera overall camera for doing a lot of different things, right? People use it for, you know, astronomy, but they also use it for what they're designed for mainly is the daytime photography, you know, portrait photography, landscape photography, all kinds of different photography. A DSLR will, will do just about everything, but it's not the best at any one thing. You have to buy uh, more purpose-built equipment for that. So that's an example of, of that. Um, so the areas I'm going to cover here in this next few minutes, talk about what type of celestial objects we want to photograph. You know, there are different needs in terms of the equipment for doing, uh, you know, between deep sky and planetary and solar and lunar, that type of thing. So I'm going to start out by looking at what you need for planetary imaging. Okay. Um, the, the, the needs or the requirements are you want a high resolution image scale uh, to be able to capture all the detail you can get. Usually it's a, a fairly large diameter astrograph with a long focal length. And the reason I say you need a larger diameter astrograph, I mean, you can do a small three inch refractor and do lunar as long as it's got a, you know, F20, F, F30 focal ratio. Uh, but the more, the bigger the objective you have, the faster you can, the exposures can be. And that's a key thing when you're doing modern uh, planetary imaging, you want to freeze the atmosphere. You want to get down to like less than five millisecond exposures, uh, typically, or down even to one or two milliseconds is what I, what I can do with a six inch telescope. So if you've got a six inch telescope, versus a two or three inch telescope, you'll, you'll, you'll go a long ways towards getting that. Uh, the other thing is if you wanna minimize, this, this talks about a couple of things. So if you have a high accuracy tracking mount, if you can track really well, if you've got a good polar alignment on a planet image, what that allows you to do is to crop uh, or set a region of interest in, around your, your uh, planet or your object, right? Um, and what that does, that saves you disk space with your AVI files. Okay, that's a big thing to think about. Uh, I, I do, I use our camera set up for deep sky, which is a wide field. It's a one by 1.3 degree field of view to do lunar imaging. And I crop it down to the full disk, but I can, I can acquire uh, you know, 2000 frames, 3000 frames, and you can get five gigabytes of data in like two minutes. <laughs> and that eats up the disk space. Yes, it does. If you're, doing, if you're doing an hour worth of lunar imaging, you could get 50 gigabytes of space to eat up. You know, that's really a large amount of space, you know, with video. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so when you're doing planetary, it's a good thing to be able to crop, crop down the image to your region of interest to minimize the disk usage. And to be able to do that, you really need to have a pretty good mount that tracks accurately. And then I talked about this before, a very high speed, high frame rate, high sensitivity camera will let you freeze the atmosphere, okay? And get rid of some of the scintillation problems you might have when you're trying to, to gather data. And that really makes these sharp images occur. 
So those are some of the things that, that you might want to think about if you're doing planetary imaging. Um, Why don't you talk a little bit about this book too, that this information is from. This, is, this book is called Scientific Astrophotography. I yeah. put, um, I put uh, the link to go straight to this book. Um, wh what all does it cover? Well, it, it's, it's kind of like a soup to nuts type of book. It, it covers every piece of equipment that's involved with any kind of astrophotography. I go over all the equipment, all the different pieces, what, what the purpose of the, the equipment is, each individual component and subsystem. And, and also I talk about uh, the main thing is how to integrate it. How do you integrate it to reach the goals that you have for your observing program now? So the, the, it's an engineering approach to creating your observing program. And then it's a design basis uh, type of thing where you say, okay, I want to do the, I want to observe these objects and I want to be able to do these measurements. So mm -hmm. what that's, so I got to set the design basis for this uh, observing program and then you match the equipment to meet the design. Okay, the design requirements. So it's kind of an engineering uh, approach to it. And I'm gonna, so these are the, I'm gonna just quickly go through the uh, table of contents here. So I talk about, um, you know, overall, what's a good, what's a good system. So you have a, uh, the astrograph is the first thing. I talk about what makes a perfect imaging system and what do you what you want out of it. And I talk about the astrograph, the imaging telescope. Um, then I talk about CCD cameras, telescope mounts. I go all into the performance requirements and performance things to look at for telescope mounts. Uh, I talk about filters and auxiliary equipment. Um, you know ability auxiliary components electrical mechanical optical type of of components that you might add onto the system um and then i talk about integration of of the system so you talk about integrating the astrograph and the camera and what you have to think about when you're doing that um there's specific um combinations of things that you can go through and and you know, understand you know for the imaging train and you got you know you got spacers and all kinds of things you had to be able to be able to reach focus and to be able to uh, get the focal ratio you want and all that kind of thing and then i talk about environmental and, and external factors that will affect the performance of your system you know weather mm -hmm. you know how it affects you Mm -hmm. You know, the, how you're out there in the cold, you know, I've got a picture in my book of me sitting out there at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah, freeze. <laughs> freeze. <laughs> you know, and it really, you know, you really got to take these things into consideration oh, if yeah. you want to get good data. Yeah. So a lot of data, you know, and a lot of data, right. Sometimes, mm -hmm. right. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part one that talks about all the different components and all the things that are in, impact your, your imaging system. There's a question here from Cameron Gillis. He wants to know if the book includes video stacking techniques for planetary imaging. I don't, I don't get into image processing. There's a lot of books out there for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more talk, I talk more about, uh, I do, I do have a section on analysis, uh, but not, not uh, image processing per se. I do get into calibration frames, yeah. what they are, how to do calibrations, how to, um, the um it's kind of like an introduction to image processing but it's nothing specific to any program or anything like that it's like an it's like an overview of the terminology and the science behind how it works mm -hmm. um so part two gets into the full integration of the system okay and how you integrate the parts, how you pick the parts to do the different, uh, uh, like we were just going over, matching your equipment to the science. And we just talked about how, what you need for planetary imaging. Uh, and then I have, then I talk about some typical configurations of equipment for doing different things. Uh, deep sky, planetary, lunar, solar, minor planet type stuff. Mm -hmm. 
And then I get into um, planning your observing uh, you know, session, all the things you think about to plan your session. So it's important to do this and to document things because you don't want to, when you get good skies, you don't want to waste time trying to figure stuff out. You want to have it already figured out ahead of time. So you oh, just yeah. go out and execute. You execute your plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I get into that. Harold Locke uh, is commenting here. He says, I'm on chapter five of this book now. And as a beginner struggling for seven months, Jerry's book is mind expanding. <laughs> well, it's oh, nice you. to see, you know, like from when you said soup to nuts, I mean, it's just from, you know, from the very beginning to, you know, ending up where you want to be. Uh, this book helps you get there. So, right. um, you know, it's, it's not an everything book, but what it does do is it, uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned this before, it involves, it, it guides you through doing a critical uh, analysis, critical thinking process about, you know, approaching your gear, uh, approaching your, what you want to uh, accomplish in, in uh, amateur astronomy, especially with, as it applies to imaging. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's a great book. It's been fantastic uh, as a resource for our customer service team. And uh, so this is the same training that we give to uh, explore scientific, um, uh, you know, employees. So it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, um, you know, and I'm glad that Jerry's here to kind of step you through it. Uh, so it's great, Jerry. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. It pretty good, you know, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you winged it very well. Thank you. So, Cause I know, you know, this stuff backwards and forwards. So, uh, but, um, mm -hmm. anyways, I think that's going to conclude our program today. Uh, we still have Caitlin and Terry with us. Uh, so what did you think about uh, today's program? It was okay, huh? Get a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry, uh, for being on. T Tyler, if you're still watching, thank you very much. And Vivian, if you're still watching, thank you again. Remember, we've got um, uh, the 28th uh, Global Star Party tomorrow night, um, starting at 7 p.m. Central. That would be 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, you know, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And uh, Terry, what time will we start the Astronomical League Live? Astronomical League Live will start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern. Okay, so that's 6 Central, and it's going to be 4 Pacific, and that's going to be Friday, uh, this coming up Friday. And so you don't want to miss Caitlin's, uh, you know, uh, lecture and, um, uh, you know, and all the other wonderful things that Terry's bringing onto the program. So it's going to be real exciting. I think we're going to have a couple of very nice days of astronomy uh, that you can watch online and interact with. And um, so, uh, and then we'll come back the following Tuesday with the 29th Global Star Party. So I think we'll have to have like some sort of special, you know, fireworks event or something on the 30th <laughs> one. I don't know. <laughs> so I, somehow I don't think fireworks and astronomy quite go together. But, you know, I don't know. Anyways, thanks very much. And, um, uh, you know, as my friend Jack Horkheimer said, uh, keep looking up. Terry, if you guys have video of Jack Horkheimer delivering a lecture, you know, maybe there's something in the Astronomical what? League archives. That would be very cool to stream I'll that check live. Chuck since he chaired uh, French Lick and see if they did run any video at that time. I'm not sure if they did. Yeah, but well, I'll check. Story oh, Musgrave was there. Uh, yeah, this story, was a really a fantastic event. Story, yeah. so. And you were there, right, Caitlin? No, you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, you were just, you weren't even born yet. So I don't think so. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your great comments. And um, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, you know, we have our four o'clock show and then we will uh, be on just as soon as we pretty much when we finish that. Uh, uh, with the uh, Global Star Party. So take care and uh, take uh, keep looking out and be safe out there, guys. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.